My name is David, and this is The Big Shut-In. So, it's been a while since I've put out a new episode of this show. Um, about six weeks, I think. It is now Saturday, September 12th, which is day 182 since my family and I began social distancing. And I apologize for the break. I There was a lot that I had to deal with here that forced me to, to step away a little bit. But I'm back now. And I think going into the fall, we could call this season two if you like, there's going to be a lot of interesting conversations to be had. I have a couple of good ones in the can already that are going to be coming out to you soon. But I, I had one left from the summer that never got processed and got out to you. And, and I'm sorry I sat on it so long. I was checking back in again with my friend Candace, who, as you may remember, is a musician, but is also in the restaurant business. She's been a, a bartender and a waiter for many, many years and is now working and living in North Carolina. And her report from mid-July of what she was going through in her attempt to go back to work for the first time in many months was really amazing. And I think it's really relevant now as much as it was two months ago when I recorded it. Because it's really struck me often in all of the crosstalk and all of the politicization of things like mask wearing and shelter in place orders and people saying, well, you can't prevent me from going out. I'm going to go do what I need to do. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go to the restaurant. I'm going to go to the bar. I'm going to go to the movies. And you can't stop me because freedom. That there's very little consideration in that attitude, it seems to me, for the people who work those jobs. And yes, you know, people want the economy to open back up. People want people to work. But the fact is, by saying, I'm going to go out, by saying things are open, you are forcing the people who work in those places. A and let's face it, the people who work in places like restaurants and theaters, nightclubs, are, are often in a different socioeconomic bracket than the people who patronize those places. N not always, but, but often that there's a real kind of inconsideration at least, and I would go so far as to say maybe cruelty, of saying to those people, you have to come and serve me because I have decided that is what I want and need, regardless of what you think is best for your safety and your health and your life. I demand this and it will be, and you will be forced to do this because there will not be any other way for you to make a living. Anyway, back in July, Candace attempted to go back to work, took a job waiting tables at an outdoor cocktail lounge in Durham, North Carolina. And what followed was really a disaster on every level. And I think it's an amazing view into the other side of those arguments about when and how things need to be reopened. So let's step in our way back machine and go back to day 125 of quarantine, July the 17th, and catch up again with Candace. So, uh, how you doing? Pretty well. I mean, you know, in like with everything that's happening, I think I'm doing pretty well. 
I haven't had the most positive experience lately with trying to return to the workforce. <laughs> What's been going on? What happened? So <clears throat> what happened was uh, I've been on unemployment since March 22nd. And then I had a job opportunity come up in the beginning of June for a job waiting tables at a hotel in the area, like patio. So they have like a big, huge patio that's usually got a capacity of about 250 people. But, you know, due to COVID, they were going to do like 110 as the max capacity. So this seemed like a good idea because it's just like, this is a big space and it's all outside and it's in the sun, which is helpful too for killing uh, the virus from what they say. And then, you know, everyone has to wear, all the employees have to wear masks and, you know, we have sanitizers everywhere. When you arrive at work, you get your temperature taken. So we did like a day of training before we opened up and then we opened with full, pretty full staff. It's a big room, uh, really. It's a big, a big, huge outdoor patio. And if you're considering the fact that the tables are six feet apart, it's a lot of ground to cover too, like just running around. So how many, how many servers would be on a shift? I don't know what their normal norm was because I had never worked there in previous summers it's a it's a place that's only it's seasonal it's only open during warm months you know but we were we were supposed to have four one of the servers didn't show up the first day so we started with three and then there was two busters and a runner which if you know I mean I know this is language that's all within food service but normally you have two people cleaning that would be cleaning up tables and also sanitizing because you've got to do a lot of extra sanitizing and to use all of the, that you can to prevent anyone from getting sick. So when we started, we also had a man, a manager for the, for the patio that has done it in previous years. But the beginning of me feeling like this wasn't going well was about two weeks. Like, mm, okay. So I worked for a month, so I got to get my time right. But about in the first week, she gave her two weeks notice. The manager so, did. Yeah, the manager did. And she had a baby at home that she had that's only about three months old. So you can imagine, like, I think she was concerned about getting sick with a baby at home. Sure. And that's understandable, right? And also during this time, North Carolina's numbers started to go up. So a mask order was put in place. for Not for us. We already had that, but for customers. So what that meant is if you arrived and wanted to sit down and have drinks, they were allowed to take their masks off if they're seated at their table because they're six feet away, I guess, is is the idea. And that they have to, in order to eat and drink, they need to take it off. But anytime they were to get up from their table to, for example, just go to the bathroom or whatever, they were supposed to be wearing a mask. So it was just like, a to me, it was like it became a, really big disaster really quickly because for whatever reason, getting customers to remember to wear their mask walking around the patio, which is pretty large, was almost impossible even with a full staff. Like we kept talking to people because the thing is like a third of the people that came there were being cautious, but I would say at least two thirds were not. And also once they'd had like a couple of drinks, they really weren't being cautious and also would get kind of offended sometimes if you said, hey, you need to be wearing your mask. I <laughs> can picture. Walking around, right? Like, telling a bunch of drunk people to do something yeah, uncomfortable exactly. is not right. like... And yeah. I felt a little bit like I was the, one of the only people who cared about it because I was working with, I would say the majority of my coworkers were in their 20s. And I'm 38, so and I have some people in my family who do have high risk pre-existing conditions. So I was concerned about it more so than I think some other people were. So the 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 manager that put on two weeks left, and they had a new manager. He had been training, but he just stopped showing up almost immediately. So 
then we didn't have a manager. And then after that, each day, it seemed like more people stopped showing up to work. So do you think they were that was not, scared or sick of it or just I don't not? Know. I, it's really hard to say. I think some people were scared. I think some people just thought it was a big pain in the ass, <laughs> to be honest. I don't know. I can't say what their reasons were, but the the thing that started to freak me out was the more short staff we became, the more impossible it became to to keep the precautions up because there was no one policing anyone. Sure. And then you're, right. you know, so I'll just like try to not make it a huge, really long story, but the the final week I was working, we were down to one of the servers walked out during one of the shifts. So we were already, we've tried to train a fourth person, but every time we tried to train someone, they would leave. Like they would just walk out during the shift because they were like, I don't want to deal with this. I guess. So this, this pre the weekend before this one was where it really, to me came to a head because we're down to two, just me and one other server one of the busters stopped showing up, so we only had one busser, and that's a person who needs to be cleaning all those tables and sanitizing in them. And that for 125 weekend, people, whole, so you're supposed to be to serving 100, f- up to 112, uh, supposedly up to 110. But still, you're supposed to be serving um, 50 people by yourself. A, a piece, yes. A that's piece. ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. And then, but get this: on top of that. One of the buses just stopped showing up, so it was only one buster. And then that day of the weekend, Friday, the hosts stopped showing up. Both of the hosts that we had stopped showing up. And these were the, the that was crucial to me because the host was the one who, when they were seating people, were explaining all the precautions, telling them what they needed to do, asking them to not tr- switch tables, like not to try to change tables, because that's a big problem. People would constantly want to move tables, and it's a whole process of sanitizing the table they just left, making sure the table that they want to move to is sanitized, all of this kind of stuff it, to, you know, for appropriate precautions, you needed to not have people just like moving around freely. And without a host, there truly was no one counting the amount of people coming up there, first of all. So I don't know if we were exceeding capacity at the, you know, this whole weekend. And then, um, no management, nobody to clean tables because the buster started hosting, trying to seat people so they wouldn't just come in and seat themselves, right? So no one was cleaning tables. The so tables are sitting dirty. People, customers are getting up and changing tables without telling anyone. And a lot of the people that were going there are not at risk people, people who are younger, like just seem to be totally unaware of how they're putting people at risk. So I actually asked to meet with the GM of the hotel on Sunday morning because I was, I didn't feel safe at all. I felt like this is an impossible situation, even without COVID. Good for you. Well, the other thing, David, is there was no one else to talk to. There was no manager. He stopped showing up, you know? So that was the next person up, you know, to talk uh, of authority that I could talk to. And also they I got the feeling that they didn't know what was going on either because I had asked about this manager, the new manager a couple of times and they kept saying he was out due to personal issues, but I just got the feeling that they had no idea what was going on. And so I expressed all these concerns Sunday morning before my, this is before I went into my shift and they had told us, some things like, oh, the host didn't come in because somebody, one of the hosts didn't come in because someone forgot she had asked for that weekend off. And they had a lot of these kind of excuses that I I didn't feel like they really knew. And they were just trying to keep us calm because we were so short staffed. So Sunday morning, I told them, listen, I don't feel safe. These are These are all the things that are going on. I can't really put myself at risk like this you know, that's me personally. Like, I don't feel like, I feel like if one person comes into this place and has COVID and doesn't know it, that we are all going to get sick. That's basically what I felt about it because there's not, not any way to police or like enforce any of the precautions we're supposed to be taking. And I am already overwhelmed with like 50 some people I'm waiting on, you know? 
So, and also customers were getting, so customers started getting really rude with me too because of the weight and because of all the things that would have happened anyway with such a short, uh, such a small staff trying to cater to all these people. So when I talked to the GM on Sunday morning, I just got the feeling that he was giving me a lot of like, what's the word, talking point kind of thing. Like he didn't, to me, he was just regurgitating information that the hotel is supposed to tell people, right? And I, when I was asking what they were, what their plans were to like make things safer, to do things, it was all kind of like, yeah, we're, we're looking into these things, we're looking, but I got the feeling that nothing was happening anytime soon. And then I went into my shift that day on Sunday and it was worse than it, like nobody showed up. It was worse than it was the day before. Like just me and the one other waiter and the host and the host, one of the hosts actually came in for like an hour and then left because she said that she had a family emergency. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you all were having a family emergency. Like, you know what? It, <laughs> yeah. Right. And I don't know how many of these people were like doing, feeling the same way I was and not, and not being there because of that or how many, you know, just had other reasons or what, you know, could have been the case. But the thing is I told the GM, that I didn't think it was safe and that I didn't think they they were doing enough and that we shouldn't be running. Basically we shouldn't be running this place with less than half the staff we're supposed to. We should, we should be closed right now. Like we should be closed until we have a full staff because it's not, there's no way to be safe this way. So then I got really, really mad on Sunday night after that shift because there were less people than there were before. And the GM of the, he, I understand he's not the manager of that patio, but he's the manager of the whole hotel, right? So he didn't seem that concerned about it. I felt freaked out. And I told, I didn't, I sent him a message on email and like outlined all the reasons why I thought it wasn't safe. And, you know, my, basically my, my concerns and work, we were already closed on Monday and Tuesday. So this is Sunday night. And I was like, I'm not coming back until you figure this out. Like, yeah. I, you, I, I, I think you should shut down for a week or as long as it takes till you can make it safe. But I have, I'm not going to return to this job unless things are going to change. So, you know, he, after a couple of days, he did answer me, but with no clear answers. And then I'm, I just, I stopped going. And I mean, he, they had a few days knowing that I wasn't going to come in. So, you know, they, I think they had somebody coming in to train, but I did talk to the other, only other waiter. And he said that uh, when they reopened Wednesday, that one person did come in to train, but the manager still wasn't there. Still had never showed back up. I have so many questions for you. Oh, uh, oh Go for it. Yeah. Tell me, tell me more about what the customers were like in all of this and what interacting right. with customers was like. Well, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I don't see that was really depressing for me, but I don't want to say that it's like everybody because this is, I started to think that the majority of the people coming into this place are the people who didn't care and uh, who are not, tra who think the mask order is annoying and who didn't, aren't concerned about getting anyone else sick. Otherwise, well, it's, if I it's self-selecting, it like right? Like if Sorry. you were, if I said there's a self-selection there. I mean, if you were really concerned about getting sick, you're not going to go out to a restaurant. That's my, yeah, that's my thinking about it. Otherwise, if I thought this was like a truly random part, uh, portion of the population, I would have a very bad view of the human race right now. But I think it was a specific percentage of the population that is not concerned and is going out and not worried about this. So, I mean, what were they like? What was it like to try and enforce the regulations with, with those kind of people? Some people would understand and be like, okay, I'm going to go get my mask or whatever. When they would get up from the table and try to like walk around or go to the bathroom, or whatever. And didn't like make a thing of it, but seemed like annoyed there were people who just like it's they would say okay when you say like you need to be walking around if you're going to walk around you need to have a mask on 
they say okay, but then you'd catch them doing it like multiple times. Like every time they would get up, they would not have it on. <laughs> so it's like being like being a like having to, the idea that schools would open too is, sounds similar to me because if you feel like you're dealing with children, like you're just going to keep doing this until you get kicked out, basically. Well, I mean, the whole thing, I have to tell you, while you're telling this story, there's something kind of ridiculous about the whole situation to me. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, you, you, you know, I've, I've talked to like doctors and stuff and, you know, people who, who, who really have to go to work because they're right. dealing, right? Like they, there's this, there's this disease. They, they, they don't want to get sick, but they have to go deal with it. So they put on protective equipment and they take all the regulations they can because it's what they're doing is critical for, you know, for society. But like serving someone cocktails is not, yeah. it's not critical. For, it's, it's not an essential function, right? Like the fact that you're no, having to like all. think about personal protective equipment and like what are the protocols to make sure we don't, you know, catch the pandemic you know and we're gonna gird up and figure out how to like it's like it's like you're preparing for war to like go play putt putt or something like it's it's mm -hmm. kind of it's silly isn't it it seems silly to oh me. absolutely i definitely walked away feeling that way because there were some other things that i thought were quite dangerous about the situation that didn't even have to do with covid which is that here i am wearing a full mask and sunglasses because it's bright sun beating down on you and it's 95 degrees like here it was like in the 90s so I'm just pouring sweat and not getting any breaks because there's no because we're understaffed so I'm like overheating really badly like a couple of times I was really concerned about how hot me and some of the other staff were getting because you're in that mask too you're just breathing hot air in and then I'm sitting here trying to get a cocktail order from a woman, like a 22-year-old girl in a bikini who's sunbathing on a patio because they have some lounge chairs and stuff. Like, trying to get her cocktail order, she's, and she's, like, putting suntan lotion on and stuff. Like, it's the, it, I found that to be totally bizarre. <laughs> I mean, did it make you feel like you're, like in some kind of novel of like, there's like the mm -hmm. idle rich, the idle rich, and you're the surf, like the lowly surf or something. Like, how can you? <sighs> well, I actually thought of because me and my partner had started rewatching the show Lost. I know that's like pretty old, but uh, it reminded me of if you've ever seen the show. There's like they had the the beginning of the show is a horrible plane crash in like a deserted island. But there's one character that's like a sorority girl type girl in, in her early 20s. And like, well, they're all trying to like find food and water and like figure this situation they found themselves in out to survive. She She's like suntanning and like painting her toenails and stuff and saying like, well, someone's going to rescue us anyway. So I'm just going to wait for the rescue plane. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it felt a little bit like that because it's like, okay, well, while well, some of us are really taking this seriously and realize that there's like a lot at stake for, you know, for pe for anyone who's at risk or even like it seems that they really don't know much about it for children, for anyone like this could be, you know, someone you know could could die from this, like whatever. We're taking it seriously and then there's this percentage of the population that doesn't care either doesn't care or isn't taking it at all seriously and thinks like, I'm just going to paint my toenails so they get to a vaccine, you know? I mean, you, you kept saying about people at risk and, you know, and it's, I mean, it's true from everything I've read and seen. It's true that older people, sick people are at a greater risk of getting seriously sick, but there are plenty of younger, healthy people who are getting very sick from this thing and even dying from it like you know yeah i mean I, everyone I there is at risk that. you know right. you're at risk yeah i am at risk i mean i guess what i we, the reason why i say that is because maybe i don't want to think about the fact that i could be at risk you know have you been tested since you quit uh not yet i waited but i quit though i stopped i 
you know, didn't go back after Sunday. So it's most likely because I haven't shown any symptoms yet that I think I was okay. I was like religiously you could be, using th- hand there sanitizer. Are, but. There are asymptomatic carriers too, though, you know, like maybe you should this just true. get a test I actually just for did. I am think. Yes, I know. I was thinking about getting a test for sure. Um, I didn't really know what to do so far. I have not left the house really since then. But yeah, why? I just see. I mean, uh, I also have been online since going to, since deciding not to return. And also that weekend, that was so horrible. The last weekend I worked, I have some like, you know, different groups I follow that are for bartenders and servers. Um, on like Facebook, they have like the bitchy waitress or the angry bartender. There's like different ones. And I just kept seeing all these posts that were very similar experience to mine. Like saying, you know, in some ways people are worse, were worse than they were before, which is just shocking to me because I've, I mean, so I wouldn't say everybody's terrible, but I've waited tables for a really long time or bartended. And, you know, you get a couple of people who are difficult sometimes. It's not really, I mean, most people you can work with and I could get along with, but like you get some people occasionally that are really difficult to deal with. And it really did seem like since things reopened, like I was getting mostly people who are difficult to deal with. I mean, two two more things that struck me while you were telling this story. Mm -hmm. One of them is, you know, all of this kind of, radical assholes out there protesting, you know, you can't make me, you can't prevent me from going out. You can't prevent me, you know, that's for, but it seems to me that those people aren't considering you (laughs) in that equation. Like, I know this is true. And that's what freaked me out of about it. Like I said, because I felt like these are, these are the exact people that are going to spread this. Like yeah. that are going to keep this going because it's clear that they're very self-centered and aren't concerned uh, for whatever reason, aren't concerned about other people. And I felt very at risk because like while these tables are six feet apart, right? You're the one going people closer. Are seated, they're not wearing their masks and I have to go to all those tables. Yeah. So and I'm honestly, like a pinball going around hitting everything. Honestly, from everything I've seen, like, if somebody is a carrier and they are not wearing a mask and you are, you're still very much at risk. Like right. if they're wearing a mask and you aren't is better, you know? Right. I know. Uh, yeah. That scares me too. And, um, and you know, there's just, it really started to break down for me when pe- when I knew tables weren't even really getting cleaned before, because not by any fault of the people working, we were just too understaffed to do it. And, the, the people I'm talking about just didn't care. They wouldn't care about sitting at a dirty table. And in the past, of course, this happens all the time. People like do annoying things and like get up and decide they want a different table and don't ask and move. But this is not normal times, you know? No, it really isn't. I mean, the, the other thing that struck me too is that somehow the regulations, by having this regulation of mask use, but saying people can still go out, you know, it, right. it's, it's leaving the enforcement of that regulation to you, <laughs> to waiters. And like, yeah, you know, like since when are you supposed to be the mask police? Like, why is that your job? And yes. And not only that, like being I'm so understaffed, you don't have any time to barely t- even take an order because you've got people trying to get your attention all around, like who also want something because there's no way for two people to wait on a hundred plus people. It's just doesn't work. It's not possible. You know, you can't get to everyone. And so then people are getting frustrated at taking it on you. And I felt like one of the only people who was very serious about the mask thing, because I think some people working there just gave up a little bit. The last of us, let's just say who were there. We're kind of at that point, just be like, whatever, I'm just going to get through this day, you know? Yeah. And all during all this, I'll, say too north carolina's numbers are skyrocketing compared to what they used to be like this is our first wave of really getting it yeah i mean that's the other thing too like i I, i'm uncomfortable by the amount of outdoor dining and 
you know, socializing that's happening here. But yeah, our numbers are still good. You know, I mean, relatively, you know, like they, you are, I do think we like, went through a wave are... and it went down, you know, and this is like mm -hmm. it was like a reward. <laughs> it's like the, the governor right. gave us a little present for like doing the right thing for a few months. Like you can go get a taco, you know, but right to and open up like that. Um, yeah, yeah. On the upward yeah. slope just seems insane to me. Oh, it's totally insane. And I think that a lot of people put it on, oh, well, it's just because more people are getting tested now. That's why the numbers are going up, but they're going up in a rate that's just crazy. I mean, have you heard people say that other than the president? No, I don't really know anyone who, but most of the people who close to me in my life who I would talk to this about are usually on the same page about this. And a lot of people I know in food service has not gone back to work, like bars are still closed, like indoor bars. It's just the fact that this place was uh, op open outside and it's all outside. But so I don't know. I feel like that it was like the hotel thought like this was a cash cow because there's nowhere else to go. Right. Yeah. And it, it is, but it's extremely dangerous, especially. And my, again, I'm not going to say it like a million times, but I thought they should have shut down when they realized but what was happening but like when I told the GM of the hotel like that I thought it, it was dangerous and there weren't enough of us to police and like that they, they should hire like a dedicated person if they're not you know or something to like police people like get out of work bouncer to go a around bouncer and yeah keep, totally yeah exactly keep people with, with their masks on you know all of those like suggestions it just seemed like not only did he really not know what was going on at the patio it, like didn't really seem to be feel any urgency around it. Uh, do you, have you heard what's happened this week? Right. The only thing I did here is I did talk to the other, only other server who I'd been working with. And I said, did the, uh, I don't want to use his name, but the, did the new manager like show up today? And he said, no. So I was like, okay. So was, so, was your friend there waiting a hundred and, you know, oh God, 50, I, 50 I tables by I himself. Not. I Is hope that... not. I just, I mean, that upsets me. And I guess he had someone training with him, but who hopefully knows what they're doing, but it doesn't matter. The fact that they were still open, like that was my point was like, you need to close this place. <sighs> Let me ask you this. Um, it seems unlikely that unemployment is going to be extended again at the federal level at least mm -hmm. until there's a change of administration, right? That's that's what everybody seems to be thinking, that uh, mm -hmm. the c Congress isn't going to approve it. So, and I'm, I also think, you know, half the country's starting their first wave. There may be a second wave. Right. You... Like, New, if anywhere, New York might be the one place getting ready for a possible second wave. I mean, here, this else. is our first wave, you know? Right, I mean, but so... I mean, it's possible that things aren't going to get a whole lot better for a year from now. I think it's, so too. Yeah, it's possible. So, I mean, some of us, and I, I'm I'm extremely lucky that I have a job that I can do remotely, that I can work from my basement and work on the computer. Mm -hmm. What are you What are you going to do if you cannot go back to work for a long time? Well, my plan has been so already. I had already been considering going back to school. I am not planning for this food service industry to come back to anything that's normal to me for a long time. I mean, I think it could be longer than a year. I'm not really sure. I want to prepare for the worst, I guess. And I also, you know, maybe I don't want to be in this industry anymore anyway. Like, the there, it was really just, just I don't want to like be depressing but the way that customers are acting towards me you know I expected coming back after all that time two months of being unemployed that and wearing this mask and it's hot and it's clear that it's uncomfortable that I kind of expected people to be more understanding than usual and I found that it was the opposite so I know that it's not the I don't want to say that it's most people who would be that way, but I just, 
I think I want to go to, to a totally different industry anyway. So my plan is to try, like, try to go back to school. I know schools are not in session right now anyway, but, and they just decided that we're going to go a whole, uh, and I am glad about this, but that Durham city schools are not, are going to do remote learning for at least another nine weeks when school starts. So we're not going to reopen schools in September, which I'm glad, but I just am looking into other stuff. I might go into healthcare even, surprisingly. <laughs> Being said, what is it? I don't mind like putting myself at risk for a, what I feel might be a really admirable or good reason to put myself at risk, but I'm not putting myself at risk to serve cocktails. My name is David Hoffman, and this is The Big Shut In. I produce the show post production by Garrett Tiedemann. It's a production of Race Car Radio, racecarradio.com. If you have feedback for me or a story that you think would be a good fit for the show, please do reach out, thebigshutin at racecarradio.com. You can also interact with the show on Facebook. Just look for The Big Shut In. Race Car Radio is a division of Citizen Race Car. We tell stories.